Hello students, today I'm going to explain you the basic concepts of macroeconomics. In this video, I'll explain you the first concept that is domestic territory. Before I introduce this concept to you, I want you to make you understand that why we study domestic territory, what is the relevance of domestic territory. Now, in the national income and related aggregates, there is a very important concept named domestic income. The meaning of domestic income is that it refers to value of all final goods and services which are produced within the domestic territory during a period of one year. Now, in order to calculate domestic income of any of the country, it is very important to understand what is domestic territory. It means what to be included and what to be excluded to calculate domestic income of any country. As per United Nations, the meaning of domestic territory is that it includes the geographical territory administered by the government within which people goods and capital circulate freely. Now this is the definition given by United Nations and domestic territory is also known as economic territory. Now as people, goods, capital circulate freely, it means that they have exclusive right of operation within the domestic territory. They can perform any of the economic activity to earn profits and that will be included in the domestic income. Now let's understand the concept of domestic territory in detail. Now the literal meaning of territory means any area of land that belongs to a particular country. Now as you can see it's a political map of India so the area of land which is within the political boundaries of India will be considered as its territory where people can perform different activities to earn money. Now in a layman's language we say that domestic territory means political frontier. Political frontier means the limitation in which people have rights to perform different activities. But for the purpose of national income accounting we learn the concept of domestic territory in a wider sense. We include various things which is not within the geographical boundaries of India but it will be considered as domestic territory of which the first is ships and aircrafts owned and operated by normal residents between two or more countries. Now ships and aircrafts which are owned as well as operated by normal residents. Now who are normal residents? Normal residents are the residents of our country who stay in our country for more than one year and those whose economic interest lies in our country. They are considered as normal residents of a particular country. This is a very important concept and I will be going to take this topic in detail in my next video. Now, as you can see here, Air India, this is the aircraft of Air India. Air India is an Indian company, which is considered as normal resident of India. Now, this aircraft is operated between two countries, that is Singapore and Australia. Now, the way which aircraft of Air India will take from Singapore, to Australia will be considered as domestic territory of India. Similarly, 
in this example you can see that that the aircraft is owned and operated by singapore airlines singapore airlines means singapore airline is considered as normal resident of singapore now this airline is operated between india and japan that's why we can say that that this will be considered as domestic territory of singapore in short any aircraft or ship if they are operated and owned by the normal resident of a country and if they are operating that ship or aircraft between two other countries that will be considered as domestic territory of their own country the second point that we have to keep in our mind while identifying the domestic territory of any country is the embassies consulates military establishment of a country located abroad now as you can see in delhi there are various embassies of different countries which are located in the region of chanakya puri now the embassies of different countries which are located in our country will not be considered as the part of domestic territory of our country that is india any embassy which is located in india will be considered as domestic territory of their own country for example here you can say its embassy of italy in new delhi india will be considered as the domestic territory of italy it will not be considered as the domestic territory of india the embassy of united states of america it will not be included as the domestic territory of india it will be considered as the domestic territory of united states of america on the other hand indian embassies are located abroad there are various embassies of india which are located in different parts of the world that will be considered as the domestic territory of india as you can see here its embassy of india in beijing that is china this will be considered as the part of domestic territory of india and it will not be considered as domestic territory of china in short we can say that embassy of a country located in any part of the world will be considered as the domestic territory of its own country it will not be considered as the domestic territory of that country in which it is located the last point is fishing vessels oil and natural gas rigs and floating platforms operated by residents of a country in the international waters where they have exclusive rights of operation for example fishing boats operated by indian fishermen in international waters of indian ocean will be considered as a part of domestic territory of india now fishermen used to go to international water every day to perform certain activities but they are allowed to perform those activities within a particular boundary that is considered as domestic territory so here we can say that that domestic territory is not only the geographical territory that also includes the international water where our country have exclusive rights of operation now after understanding the points which are the part of domestic territory now we have to understand which are not included in the domestic territory of any country i have already discussed it with you the embassies consulates military establishment of foreign country which is located in any country will not be considered as domestic territory of that particular country now here i am going to take the example of india only russian embassy in india will not be considered as part of domestic territory of india it will be considered as domestic territory of russia and the last point which we have to keep in our mind while identifying the domestic territory that is international organizations international organizations like united nations unicef who these are not considered as domestic territory of any country for example the headquarter of united nations is in new york that is united states of america but that will not be considered as domestic territory of us all the international organizations 
their headquarters, their offices, they are not the part of domestic territory of any country. After understanding the concept of domestic territory in detail, now let's try some questions so that the concept will be more clear to you. Now the first is an Indian company in London. Now as we can see on this board, I have written India in between. This square is basically represents the political boundary, which is the geographical boundary of India. These are the points which are the part of domestic territory of India and these are the points which are not the part of domestic territory of India. As London is not within the geographical boundary of India, therefore company in London, Indian company in London will not be considered as the part of domestic territory of India. Next. Now Microsoft office in India. Now Microsoft office in India maybe microsoft office in india is this so this office is located within the geographical boundary of india within the domestic territory of india that's why it will be considered while identifying the domestic territory of india next company in india owned by a japanese national same the company is in india within the geographical boundary within the domestic territory so yes company in India owned by a Japanese national will be considered as the part of domestic territory of India. Next is Indian embassy in Japan. As you can see the second point which I have written over here that is the embassy's military establishment consulate of India. Anywhere in the world will be considered as domestic territory of India. So yes Indian embassy in Japan will be considered as the part of Indian domestic territory. Next is branch of State Bank of India in China. Now China is not within the geographical boundary nor even written over here. So that will not be considered as the domestic territory of India. However, we will consider the branch of State Bank of India as the domestic territory of China. And the last is Tata rented its building to Google in America. Now, America is not within the geographical boundary of India, nor written over here. So, it will be considered as the domestic territory of United States of America. It will not be considered as the part of domestic territory of India. With this, we are able to finish the first concept of macroeconomics, that is domestic territory. I hope you like the video. Thanks and have a nice day.